Now, beloved within the seven day of in this church, beloved in the seven day of in this church, this is a very urgent, urgent message. A very urgent, urgent message called a look into David Gates' message called Behold the Bridegroom Tarrieth, Revival and Reformation, and Apostasy at the Jordan. Now, beloved, when I listened to David Gates' message on this evening, he explained that not preaching the imminent return of Christ that our seven day of the church leaders have stopped doing since 2015, saying that Christ return is soon. When our general conference leader, Pastor Tillerson, stated, Oh, Christ's coming could be 100 years. The sun's all going to be here within 100 years. But read around the, around the corner within three to five to 20 years. That's, that's, that's heresy, he said. Pastor Tillerson, general conference leader. But David Gates said that it's imminent within three to five to 20 years. But he said our general conference leaders voted to take a vote in 2015 to say that our... Um, Christ return is not imminent based off the events. It's only um, soon. And um, Greg Contras, the 240 that I heard from David Gates' sermon, Eva Dorris says, um, this it says, um, though no man know the day nor the hour, we are instructed to know when it is yet near. When it is yet near. And then Great Controversy, the scripture only safeguard says, we have a point pointing out every way mark on the heavenward journey and we ought not to guess at anything. Now, beloved, the main point David Gates brought out in this sermon, the bridegroom tarot, is that after 1888, in that son's law crisis, America dropped a bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. And when they dropped that bomb, that ended World War II. And that that bomb would not have been dropped if the Seven Day Adventist Church would have accepted the 88 message, which is very, very, and very, this is why it says, the first, second, and third angel's message. And that message is righteous by faith. And I totally agree with David Gates on that. So let's, let's examine this. What is the 88 message? The 88 message is righteous by faith. For by grace you say through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift that God lets any man should boast. That's the 88 message. So the 88 message is not relying upon yourself to keep the Sabbath, not relying on yourself to be a vegan. Not relying upon yourself to uh, not cuss and gamble and watch worldly movies. That's the 88 message, coupled with the law keeping of the 44 message of, of God's law immutable, not watching worldly movies, you know. Not, and, and, so we find the 44 message in the book Early Writings, and the, a lot of the standards he wrote and the messages to young people. But when you couple that with the 88 message, beloved, with the seven day of the church, you get a very balanced message. And when the church rejected the 88 message stating that we cannot overcome sin, um, short of paradise, short of the second coming, and that we cannot overcome sin before the mark of the beast crisis, that's when that happened. Now, and then he broke it down, David Gates, in that sermon called The Hold the Bridegroom Cometh, or um, The Turn of the Bridegroom, that the message now is only for a select few within the seven day of the church, the majority of the 22 to 25 million and growing of the corporate structure of seven day Adventist believers will be lost. And I totally agree with him. In his sermon, Eve of Ador, David Gates brought up the fact that in Ellen White's day, message young who says, I saw not but one in 20 on the church books, the parents of close life history with God. They will thoroughly confirm themselves in idols and be lost. So that, that's one in 20 in Ellen White's day. And then he explained in 2018, one in five in his day. So what is it now in 2023? Is it one in one? Half the church? All these people coming into mass in our, in our, in our, in our church, in our churches like Oak University Church with Breath of Life, with the late, with the late great pastor, Devil of Snell, bringing them into the celebration movement, the, the Sunday surge movement, the women's ordination movement, the jury makeup and lipstick movement. A minister told me just tonight, he didn't support Sunday surge. He was like, no, Lucius, I don't believe that the celebration worship this, this celebration worship, this woman's donation worship, this jury making lipstick worship is, uh, is, 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 is apostasy, he said. Those are just issues that we're fighting over or quibbling over in our church. So let me ask him a question. What is revival or reformation in his church, in his mindset? What is primitive godliness in his mindset since apostolic times? And so primitive godliness 
is come back to standard-based religion, standard-based Adventism, but in the spirit and the heart saying, I cannot do this by myself. I need Jesus Christ to do this. A very balanced message, beloved. That's, that's, that's derived from my faith message when I've seen coupled with the standard-based religion. Like, like many say today, they say, we can't be saved by works. We're saved by Jesus. Of course I agree. But we're lost by evil works. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15, 13. He said, now unto him that is able to keep him falling. Jude 24. He said, um, he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. He says in Titus 2, 12, 13. But denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly within this present world. So we need to live, we need to live a pure good, clean Christian life, and we can't deny ourselves worldly movies. This is why it says these worldly movies like pornography and, and self-abuse and all these things, and she's always, by the way, she condemns both of these things, are like a hotbed of immorality and vice. This is why I condemn cheese eating and smoking. She said smoking is an insidious poison, just like she considers she condemned self-abuse and, and, and theater going. She says it's a hotbed of immorality and vice. Wake up, folks. Now is the time. If you don't make your calling like sure, right, calling and election sure now at this green savage crisis and this climate crisis, climate crisis, you're going to be lost. You see the current events in our world today? You see how COVID-19 shut down the world for three and a half years. And it's not going to let up, folks. Don't let them pull the wool over your eyes. They were going back to a time of peace and temporal prosperity. And when they shall cry peace and safety unto you, then sudden struck them upon them as one that you they shall not escape. That's our first lesson in 5.3. But that's what Luther's saying today. They're saying Christ not come back for 100 years. Since all going to not be here for 100 years. And they're giving awards to Ganun Diop with Pastor Ted Wilson giving awards to Manus Empire Pope Francis for World Youth Day. I wish I was not saying these things. I wish I was not saying these things. I'm not trying to go on the attacks, my brothers. These are my brothers in the faith, brothers in Christ. So I pray for them. I love them. But they're trying to please man and trying to please the system. But no, I'm sorry, Pastor Ted Wilson. It is not revival and reformation to give an award to Pope Francis, who, by the way, is a Jesuit. Greg Hans, which he says in, in, um, in Re French Reformation, and the Jesuits, have, their order is to undo all that the, the Protestant Reformation has tried to accomplish. It is not revival and reformation to give him an award for World Youth, World Youth Day. We need to clean up our house and rebuke the man. This is why it says in testimonies to ministers, we have a job to expose the wickedness of the man that's in power. No time for cheap, cheap teaching. No time for ecumenism. You know, I, one thing I agree with the Vidians on one thing. The Vidians don't know everything. When they say, and as I said, seven in the church will join the threefold union. I'm seeing the seven day in the church at this time join the threefold union with this ecumenism stuff, the celebration movement when the church is. There's one project stuff in our schools. The spiritual information which is, the, which is spiritualism, which is um, Catholic Jesuit prayer. And we have a professor here at Oakwood University who teaches that, still teaches that here at Oakwood, coupled with the women's ordination movement. All of it, beloved, it is not right. It is not right. It's very funky. It's not right in God's eyes. 2 Timothy 2, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished, under all good works. It's not good works to get people to go back in the backside of the apostasy and, and antinomialistic theologies that undermine the sanctuary truth, that Christ is the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, blotting out sin, investigating character, and, uh, and, 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 and getting our records right. No, he's not, he's not spreading upon us the benefits of his atone, atonement and the, the atonement of the cross since no, he went to the most holy place, October 22, 1844, and he's close to leaving the most holy place right now as our high priest. And if we're not ready, beloved, if our, if our spiritual house was dirty, if we're cussing, smoking, drinking, fussing, lusting, and, and, and not serving God with a whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, we're going to be lost. We need to fast and pray, stand the narrow way, keep our life clean every day. Don't take this letter to see imposture of our seven Adventist leaders at Pelk getting their jiggy on with his Christian rock and, and hooping and hollering at these first day ministers and, and doing this stuff and allowing our girls to come from the pulpit 
or seven devilishly women with a prayer seam dressed up in blue and purple lipstick with the hair cut with red and purple and pink hair and exposing their, their, their breasts and their pants out of covering in their, in their thighs and stuff like that on the pool. But that's why it says women should not wear pants in church, especially not on the pulpit. So come on, now, we need to get off this stuff. When are we going to get off this stuff? It's time for the straight testimony. And I appreciate what Dr. O is doing at State Line 7 Nevins Church and also Elder Deontay Jefferson and Pastor David Donaldson. I appreciate what Pastor Jeremiah Davis is doing, um, Elder Marcus Mason is doing, Pastor Randy Skeet is doing, Pastor uh, Ivor Myers is doing, Pastor uh, Stephen Boyer is doing, and giving a straight testimony to Laodicea and giving the loud cry of the Elijah message in his last days to the uh, last race and also what the Batch is doing. These are the type of minister Ministers and ministries that we need to listen to. And I'm so grateful. Doctor has a religious liberty weekend this coming weekend. He's doing a great work in his ass as a minister to work. Most Congressman, Father, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank God, wonderful mercy and blessing. Please save the people in your kingdom without the loss of one. Please look in the heart of Jesus Christ in his ass days and believe in the Bible and the spirit prophecy for themselves. Please let them um, overcome sin, overcome worldliness, overcome lust. And um, be ready, ready to give a straight testimony, a straight testimony to John the Baptist, like Sister Wife says. And just cause my prayer, man. God bless you, family. Happy Sabbath. Maranatha.